Hi, this is Ahmed Alogaili and Manos Brilakis, presenting case 238 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case illustrating some of the challenges associated with trying to recanalize a balloon undilatable CTO. The patient was a woman that had dyspnea on exertion and then came with out-of-hospital cardiac arrest. She was resuscitated, she had a cardiac MRI that showed normal ejection fraction, there was viability everywhere, and uh, the coronary angiogram showed the right coronary CTO and a circumflex CTO. She did receive an ICD, and she was referred for recanalization of the chronic total occlusions. This is a coronary angiogram. There is a tight proximal circumflex lesion and a chronic occlusion in the mid-circumflex after the takeoff of this large marginal branch. The LAD doesn't have any severe lesions. There are collaterals filling the distal RCA in the right posterior lateral. And this is the right coronary artery that is occluded in the mid-segment. The distal vessel is filling through both septal as well as epicardial collaterals. So we do have a blunt proximal cap, but clear cap. The length is relatively short, 20 millimeters. And then uh, the distal vessel is um, with some diffuse disease. We do have some septal as well as some epicardial collaterals. Our plan is to try undergrade first. If it didn't work, to do dissection reentry, And if that didn't work, go retrograde through septals. So we tried with a filter XTA through a turnpike microcatheter. There is difficulty getting through the proximal cap. We switched uh, for a more penetrating Gaia Next 1Y that seems to be going into an acute marginal branch. We then switched to a Gaia Next 3, which did seem to go along the course of the vessel. However, it is now clear by the knuckling of the distal part of the Y that we are not into the lumen, but we are into the extra plug space. So at this point, we decided to try to re-enter. We delivered a Stingray balloon and did a double blind stick and swap with a guy in X3 and a pilot 200, but unfortunately, we were unable to get in. So the next step here was to try to go retrograde. So we tried to surf through uh, the septal collaterals. We used a Sion Black guide wire with um, various maneuvers. It takes um, this big band and then seems to be advancing along the course of the posterior descending artery. We confirmed that we were into the PDA by doing an injection from the left. We're actually in the PDA and then it's going into one of the other branches of the PDA, likely another septal. We then advanced uh, the Sion Black um, all the way into the distal right coronary artery and then close to the distal cap of the CTO. You can still see the Stingray was still there into the extra plug space. We then advanced the retrograde uh, Mongo and uh, try to do the reverse cart. And uh, we were able to externalize the guide wire and then try to predilate. These are non-compliant balloons up to 26 atmospheres. And unfortunately, we have a waste. So there is a balloon undilatable lesion into the proximal to mid-right coronary artery. This is a de novo lesion, and these are some thoughts about how to try to approach these lesions. So we can use intravascular imaging to see if there are any criteria that make it less likely for this lesion to respond to balloon, for example, having circumferential calcium, having superficial calcium, having thickness more than 0.5 millimeter, and having a length more than 5 millimeters. In this case, we did not do that, but we tried with a high-pressure balloon as well as a plaque modification balloon. The other option, if we have this criteria, is to try either with a therectomy or with some other modification strategies such as intravascular lithotripsy and a very high-pressure balloon. The atherectomy is preferred for long lesions, whereas the IVL and the opium balloon for shorter lesions. And if all this fails, another option is to use laser. We typically don't use contrast in the novel lesions, only in stent. If that doesn't work, another option is to do the extra plaque or subintimal lesion crossing and either crush the lesion from the outside or essentially dissect around and now expand the extra plaque space. And if everything fails, then as a last resort, one can send the patient to coronary bypass. And always intravascular imaging is very important because sometimes it may appear that the lesion has expanded, but in reality, there is still significant residual stenosis. So in this case, we tried with a plaque modification balloon. This was a Scorflex. 
Unfortunately, up to 26 atmospheres, there's still a waste on the balloon. We tried to deliver an OPN balloon, but couldn't get through that lesion. And the reason we did the OPN is because it was a short lesion, so we thought it might be better than a therectomy. Plus, we had done extra plaque modification further down. But we were able to deliver an intravascular lithotripsy balloon, and this uh, successfully expanded the RCA lesion. So then we placed uh, a stent, but unfortunately we had poor outflow, and we had put a wire into what we thought was the posterior lateral, but there is poor flow going into that vessel. We thought it might be due to dissection based on intravascular um, IVUS. And then uh, uh, we placed another stent. Now we have excellent flow into the PDA, but not so good flow into the posterior lateral. And we debated about this, but we decided to leave it there for now because the patient was going to return anyway for recanalization of the circumflex. And we could try a repeat attempt to recanalize that posterior lateral at that time. So this was the final result and multiple lessons from this case. The first one, the importance of change. We tried all crossing strategies here. We tried undergrade wiring, didn't work. We tried ADR, it didn't work. We finally used retrograde that worked. We had a balloon and dilatable lesion in the right coronary artery. We tried high pressure balloon, it didn't work. We tried a plaque modification balloon, it didn't work. We tried OPN, but couldn't get it there. And then we tried finally intravascular lithotripsy, and that successfully expanded the lesion. And finally, after stenting, we did have poor outflow that was likely related to the dissection. After covering the distal edge of the stent with another stent, Timothy flow was restored. Finally, we did have uh, suboptimal flow into the branch, into the posterior lateral, but we decided to stage this for a later time to allow for any dissections in that area to heal. Thank you.